Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at Unreal Engine 5 Early Access as well as the Valley of the Ancients project that they shipped along with it. And to be honest, I didn't think this was going to be done for today. I expected my hands-on to take at least a day while my computer compiled all the shaders and all of that stuff, but I was pleasantly surprised. For a 200 gigabyte project, this actually worked smashingly well. For first off, if you didn't already hear the news, I covered it this morning. Hit like and subscribe to find out all the latest and greatest on the game development news, but the big thing here is Unreal Engine. Engine 5 is available in early access. And along with Unreal Engine 5, we also got a new demo project. I covered this in today's earlier video, so I'm going to ignore that. We're going to not really go through what's new here, but instead today, this is going to be more of a hands-on video. So you can see Unreal Engine 5, you can see what has changed, some of the new features, and without further ado, let us jump right in. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just show you Unreal Engine 5. This is the new user interface, and it is beautiful. They have done a wonderful job of just slightly tweaking what was there. So this is Unreal Engine 5. This is Unreal Engine 4. So I definitely like the new color change for sure. I like the streamlining of icons. You're going to see some of the, like, the small things that they've done here. And personally, my favorite, one of the things I found myself using all the time was a content browser. But when I didn't want it, it was in the way. Now we have control space. Pops up the content browser and gets rid of it. You've got new docking tools and docking support, much better use of your screen. You can also add new content quickly and easy by clicking the add button. This control space, this is a thing of beauty. It really optimizes your screen space. Another thing you'll notice is the ugly toolbar. It's gone. Also, the modes that were always, you had to come in here and break them down where you wanted to work with the landscape, brush editing, mesh painting, or the... <coughs> They were all here in collapsed document. Now you'll notice simple toolbar, much nicer, much easier to work with. Everything here, by the way, can be uh, customized. You've got the abilities to drop down and get more details available there. Another thing that has been added here is a streamlined here. So if you need to create a new actor or something in your scene, there is a create button, pops it down, makes it much nicer to work with. On the whole, this user interface is just so much, like it's the same basic thing. It's just, this is cleaner. It, it's much, much nicer. Another thing that we're looking at right here right now, this is the new Valley of the Ancients example. There is a ton in here. It uh, comes with a number of um, assets and such from um, there's some mega scan stuff in here. We got some of the new audio in there. We'll look at that in just a minute. Uh, the mega sounds features and functionality. Uh, we got new animation tools in there, but we've also got some really cool stuff going on in this particular release. Let me get rid of that uh, control space. Come on. All right, there we go. So you're going to see here, you now have world partitioning. And you see this world is just gigantic, broken into grids of cells. You can actually uh, have multiple. So I could go here and move a camera to a different chunk in time. Uh, and we can navigate around our gigantic world here. Now, one of the big things about this particular release is that it's now got nanite. And nanite seems to be cooked in at the very core. You can have extremely dense meshes like what we are seeing in action right here. And um, it takes care of the complexity for you. So we can navigate around the world, gigantic world here, and we can handle a lot of it. Now, one thing you may be questioning is, okay, well, what about performance? Well, what you're seeing this is running on a... Uh, uh, NVIDIA 2070 mobile GPU, uh, i7, uh, 32 gigs of RAM laptop, and it's, it's okay. We're definitely pushing the limits of our new machines, but then again, we are looking at a gigantic piece of data here. So, um, gives you an idea of what we're working with. Let me just find here. Let, let me search for that fireplace again. Uh, and all right, fireplace, we'll go and focus on there. Uh, snap view to object. There we go. So here we are in our main character. So you see here, uh, we are in a particular world. Another neat new feature of Unreal Engine 5, in addition to the ability to, to partition the world into giant chunks, which it'll automatically load in and out for you, Nanites, which allows you to use incredibly high density meshes and it just takes care of it for you. You also now have data layers. So this is basically a way of having um, multiple sets of data on a particular map. So for example, we have the Dark World. I'm gonna turn on Dark World. This is gonna take a little bit of time to do it. This is the same map. It's just another set of details. So it is instead a nighttime map. So now we are in a nighttime version of things. Uh, pretty cool on the whole. Now, in terms of how does the performance work? Well, that's where it gets a little bit iffy. We'll actually go ahead and run the Valley of the Ancients demo here so you can see it in action. There's some pretty cool stuff going on here, uh, but it also is 
let's just call it a bit of a pig. So we'll let this run. I uh, may have to pause it. Give me a second. All right, there we go. So we're loaded in. Now, one of the things I found absolutely amazing with Unreal Engine 5 is when I first loaded this up, again, I expected it to be compiling shaders for, you know, just if you use Unreal Engine 4, you know what I'm talking about. Any changes and you are spending a heck of a lot of time waiting for it to compile the shaders for you. This time, I loaded it up, none of that. So it's doing it in the background. You're also seeing uh, my frame rate is pretty much... Yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to back over. We've all seen Unreal Engine 4 before, but I'm going to get rid of it so it isn't running in the background. All right, so here we can see the example in action. I'm going to go ahead, we'll fire up the drone, so we'll left click. And what this allows us to do is um, see the world, kind of uh, how you can page in and out of. So here you can see, get an idea of the likes of gigantic infinite worlds. I'll hold down the turbo button and let's just fly through the world. Now there's some weird walls and such I bounce off. I'm not 100% certain what's going on. And you're going to notice we have some uh, some frame rate drops for sure. But it gives you an idea. You can have these massive high polygon worlds and it'll take care of it for you. Also, don't forget, I'm running this in the editor. So if I run this as a build, it's going to run and perform much better. All right, so now we've got our character. Let's see some of the character animation works here. So go ahead, let her stand up. And you're seeing some screen tearing, some chunking for sure. Uh, but Oh, no, I don't want, I don't want you. I want my character to get up. Okay, come on, W, get up, get up. There we go. And then so what we can do is we can walk over and activate dark mode. Remember I showed you earlier on that we could switch between the two things. Let's go ahead. So mouse look to walk around. There is a very high polygon world that we are working with. Now we're just going to go on over here. You're going to notice there's full walk animations and setup on this character. So if you want to learn any of those things, We'll go ahead and we'll interact with that. And the first time you do this, by the way, there is quite a loading chunk for it. But once you've done it, it's cached some of the data. So you can see here, uh, transitioning is going to take a while. This might be one of those points where you would have to throw a loading screen in your game. Uh, but again, I don't know what it's going to be like in build. But now we are in dark world mode. Same map, different version. So this is where that new data layers is going to come in. And so we got walking animation, running animation. Uh, let's now we're going to see chaos destruction in action right here. So you now have the ability to blow things up. And then another new thing here is you notice we've got this rubble here with a different height. That jump. So that animation right here. Watch this animation. Right there. And then this one for a much higher surface. Those are being controlled by the same controller. That's also something else that's new here. We'll do a little bit more destruction here. And in a minute. Oop, forgot to. Charge it up enough. All right, so let's blow that out. We're going to get through there. So that is the new chaos destruction system in action. And then see this thing on the horizon. Well, that is the new ancient boss. And this is where my uh, video card is going to run out of memory. Notice uh, the top red warning. Yeah, so this, I think it's an 8 gigabyte card. It's just not going to cut it anymore. And the performance gets choppy as heck. So there's definitely some performance side of things, but this is cinema quality graphics we're seeing being rendered out in real time. And this demo is designed basically to, to you know, require the best hardware out there. So we're gonna go ahead, you're gonna see him charge up his attack. There we go, we'll dodge roll out of the way. And let's, let's shoot him in the head, boom. So that, is the Ancients demo in action. Uh, so you can see it's a bit of a double-edged sword. The results are amazing. You can get an idea of what this project will do for you, but at the same time, uh, it is uh, resource intensive. Again, this is the first time 32 gigs of RAM and an eight gigabyte video card just haven't cut it. But then again, for most of us, we are not going to be pushing these kind of polygon counts. It's one of those things just you know, for most people, it's not going to be uh, that level of detail in most games. So you're not going to magically have to get uh, an awesome new PC to make things work. Uh, you, unless you are doing a uh, Mondo project of some kind. If you're doing uh, indie development work, you're going to be just fine with your existing hardware out there. Uh, so that there, that's the ancient world in action. I'm going to let myself get back to edit mode and we're going to show you a couple of other new things. All right, so here we are back in Unreal uh, Engine. Again, control space. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the assets that are in here. So if you want to get this started, first thing you're going to want to do is come into Ancient Content Maps and load up Ancient World. That is the big thing here. Now, if you're also interested in some of the assets that are being used here, 
uh, there is this Mega Scans Asset Zoom. I'm not going to save this, and I'm going to show you what is involved with loading a new level. So if you've done this in the past, you know it normally takes quite a while. Boom, it's done. So that is much nicer. So these are a number of the high scan assets that are being, so these are all the things basically being used to create those scenes. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check them out, they are all available right here. But you notice in loading that level, it was basically instantaneous. That is, that is pretty awesome. So if you want to go check out various different renditions of our character and so on, all available right there. All right, so that is all of the assets being used in this scene, and that is how fast things go about loading, which again, is pretty cool. And then we got down here, let's go take a look at some of the other stuff that's going on here. And I'm gonna showcase in Ancient Battle uh, characters, the Ancient One. So this is the Ancient One. This is the character we just fought. Just come on in here, the blueprint for it is available uh, right here. I should be able to see him in action. Uh, why are you not there? Did I pick the wrong thing? I don't think so. Uh, anyways, we'll get out of there. I want to showcase it over here. So with that character, we're going to the animations. And here are a number of the animations that go together. Control that one. So for example, uh, fire to base here. Firing. Here's the firing animation. And this is going to showcase some of the new animation tools. But also, you can hear that. Well, we're running off two meta sound files in this animation. Uh, so that is another one of the new features. Let me just turn that right back down. So I don't know if I can directly open them from here. Yeah, so I can open those up or I can find them basically once again in the content browser. That control space thing, obviously, it's really kind of awesome to be honest. So audio, uh, meta sounds. This is the other brand new feature here. So we got a number of different meta sounds. So uh, golem foot landing. So this is the sounds controls for the foot. And what the meta sounds allows you to do is basically script audio. This is giving you uh, F mod type integrated functionality directly inside of Unreal Engine 5. So you're going to be able to input things from your scene and interact with them with how your audio is created. So you see here we're, we're shuffling in, uh, shuffling wave files into wave players that were then mixed and then output left and right channel control support. Uh, and this is, again, controllable in the animations like we just saw a second ago. So those are animations being controlled in part of the timeline. Those animations are dynamic and they react to things in the scene. So MetaSounds is brand new and quite cool. So there is a lot of stuff going on here. This is being lit by lumens. Uh, these uh, massive high polygon, let's just go in here and take a look at what we're dealing with here. These super, super high polygon, high resolution meshes. Uh, they are being just handled here by Nanite. So it's all kind of just, Nanite's just sort of baked in. You just feed in really high resolution stuff and Unreal Engine 5 takes care of it for you. You set up uh, real time lighting and um, Unreal Engine Lumens just takes care of it for you. You don't have to do light map baking. You don't have to really do LOD generation. It's gonna be more of a creators create what they see and they populate it in the world. On top of that, audio experts are gonna be able to come in here, use meta sounds uh, to create dynamic sounds that interact with the world. We have this nice clean UI design. Again, this wonderful content drawer, which really changes the way you work with Unreal Engine. Uh, we've got new docking and changing support. It is a brilliant release. So there is so much to like here. And I think the thing that I like the most, I'm gonna go ahead again and I'm gonna load back that original level. So if you wanna check that out, it's under ancient content. And then we'll go here and find maps, ancient world. So this is a gigantic map. And to load it, it takes opening, opening, and all right, it takes a few seconds, but this used to take minutes and many minutes. I actually, honestly, when I first downloaded this example, I, I didn't think I would get this video out today because it would just take so damn long, but it doesn't. It, it's just a beautiful thing. And now it's gonna take, take longer than I was expecting, but it is still quite impressively quick uh, how fast these levels open. And again, keep in mind, these levels are gigantic. And there we go. We are in our level. We're not sitting here watching Shader 1 of 999,000 compile. We're here. We are in. It's going to be a little bit chunky at first when you first open this thing. But otherwise, you are just in and using your game. Uh, and then above, 
above and beyond that, the, all the things we talked about earlier on, we now also have world partitioning, which kind of takes making these gigantic levels for you, splitting them up into grids that you can deal with individually. So you don't really even need to care about how large your level is. You don't really have to break things up. Unreal Engine is doing that for you. And then finally, we have the data layers here, which allows you to do funky things like have uh, different instances of a map kind of in the same thing, just on different layers. So you could have like a uh, post-apocalyptic world and the pre-apocalyptic world. So let's think about something like um, Fallout 4, where you have this scene uh, before the bomb fell and then after the bomb fell, but it's the same level. It's just destroyed in one. Well, you could do that now using data layers, and you can just basically switch back and forth between the layers by clicking and letting it load. So that is some really cool stuff going on here. And that it's a quick hands-on with Unreal Engine 5. There is a lot of impressive stuff here. I'm, I'm shocked that they managed to clean up the interface as much as they did, because quite frankly, Unreal 4 was starting to get kind of ugly. Uh, this is a beautiful engine now. Uh, they've done a good job here. The only thing that I would comment at this point, I feel like the tabs could be either collapsed into this row here to save some space, so we could get a little bit back there. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's much nicer to work with. Uh, I do, again, love this. Everything is dockable, by the way. Uh, you can take any particular tab, drag it wherever you want. So if you want to control things, you have uh, full customization available to you as well. And everything can be closed, minimized, however you want. Uh, but I do love this. We also got the uh, quick console available down here. Unreal Engine 5, that was a quick hands-on. Also a quick look at the Valley of the Ancients. Uh, as you saw during the demo, it did run me out of video memory. So you're going to uh, need to have a beefier machine if you are making a beefier game. But, you know, for a lot of professional level game developers, those are the people that are going to be using most of these AAA assets, AAA level sides, and so on. They have the machines for it. For the indie developer, well, you just don't need to use this much, and you can still take advantage of most of the features of Unreal Engine itself. And you'll notice, as an editing experience, it's perfectly fine. I'm on an Unreal, I'm on, again, uh, an NVIDIA 2070 mobile, and um, I don't find any performance issues at all with this. It works, uh, it's smooth, it's clean, it works. Uh, you know, it's just actually during the game itself that things get really kind of choppy. Uh, but I got to say, I am impressed. What do you think of Unreal Engine 5? Uh, what new features have you the most excited? Uh, are, are you even thinking about switching over to Unreal Engine 5 if you weren't there already? The one thing that I did find missing, though, in the announcement, I'm hoping we get something soon, is there's no Unreal Engine script yet. A kind of an intermediate layer between coding with C++ or using visual coding with Blueprint. Uh, they're working on something and they announced something and there is a scriptable version of Fortnite in the works. So there is something out there. It just wasn't announced with this release. It hasn't made it in. Uh, we're curious to see when that, uh, we'll call it Unreal Script, which is a dumb name because UDK3 actually had Unreal Script. Uh, but there is going to be a scripting language of some kind. They bought a scripting language company specifically for this. It just doesn't seem to have made this release. But otherwise, everything I am seeing with Unreal Engine 5 blows my mind. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.